so hi Jaron, how are you doing today? I'm doing quite amazing, to be honest. Monday is hands down my favorite day, so it's another great start of the week, you know. Awesome. So just before we get started, just if you can a little bit introduce yourself to us. Yeah. So my name is Johan. I'm 25. I'm originally from Denmark, but have been living in Bali for three months now. Probably have another three months to go, and uh, then I have the whole world to see. So I'm 25, still young, but I just I love adventure. So that that is kind of me, like thinking outside the box, seeing things, That's awesome. places. <laughs> so um, can you easily adapt to any situation as a digital nomad? Is it easy for you? I would say it's easy for me, but I've always always been been creative, always like to build like right from when I was uh, six years old, sitting on the beach, like making inventions on my blog. I started to do two offline startups. I've been in two other network marketing businesses and now found my my calling here. But I've always been good at taking quick decisions and adapting to new situations. I do a lot of state control and like if I don't have power over anything, then I'm not going to let it control me. I'm just going to adapt to the situation and make the best out of it. How long have you been traveling now? Traveling? So on, on Bali only for three months and besides that, I've only been, um, been in Europe, which is also why I got to Bali. Last year, I was here when uh, when COVID hit, so we had to go home before time. And getting to the airport in Bali was just like a culture shock for me. It was like, wow. So I'm, I'm going to travel a lot more. I've, I've just begun, but I haven't been traveling. Just begun, yeah. It's a nice age to start. Yeah. Bali is, <laughs> is paradise. paradise. All right. So we spoke about it uh, before, but do you have any dependency? at home, like maybe a dairy parents or girlfriend? Um, so the only dependencies right now for me would be my grandparents who are getting very old and I feel like I should, you know, like you don't know what you have until you lose it and I want to enjoy their company as much as possible. They are 98, uh, 94, 84 and 81, I think. So right now I have to figure out if I should stay on Bali until October and go home there, which was always the plan, or if I should go home now, be with them as much as possible and go back. But my friends are very supportive. My family is very supportive. I don't have a girlfriend right now and my business is online. I work on Facebook, so not really any dependencies, to be honest. So you're free, free to go anywhere you go, anywhere you want. Free like a bird. Free, free like a bird. bird. That's awesome. All right. So how much do you put into your work every day? How many hours a day do you work? So right now I work probably six to seven hours, but it is, I get up at 5 a.m. every morning and sometimes I have calls at uh, like Zoom conversations at 10 p.m. because, you know, I have clients and connections around the world, like some in Canada, some in Europe. So the work days are not sure if I should say relative, like you cannot keep a schedule like I could in Denmark. So six, seven hours altogether, but like very spread out over the day. What do you do exactly during those six, seven hours? So I do time management and client acquisition coaching on Facebook. So I help other coaches be more productive, do more and less time and get client without ads. So it's a lot of working on Facebook and it's a lot of Zoom conversations. It's a lot of building content for my audience, helping my clients out, answering their messages. So it's just connecting, talking to other people, really. Is this is something that you have learned at school, what you're doing now? No, I've, I've invested uh, a bit more than 42,000 in courses, coaches, practices, education, self-education. So I've, I'm an educated blacksmith. That's what I used to do before. So I went to actual school until 10th grade. I didn't go to high school or anything like that. So it's all something I've been learning by finding people who are better than me at what I do. Awesome. Awesome. 
Um, so what did you do with your personal belongings back home? Do you have a lot of stuff? So I actually, I lived at my, my parents' loft or the, the attic from August last year until April when I moved here. Because I, I lived in a big city, Denmark, second biggest city is 300,000 inhabitants. So it's a very small, big city. But I moved, <laughs> yeah, it is. I moved home to my, my parents in the countryside to get away from distractions and parties and friends and stuff like that. So I actually have all my things stocked up at my, at my parents' place right now. So it was no problem. Are you a minimalist? Or do you like to start Can the sound disappear real quick? Can you repeat that? Uh, are you a minimalist? I, I would say so. I would say so. Yeah. You don't need a lot of stuff to be happy. No, not at all. Like now I'm here in Bali. I brought a suitcase with clothes. And actually, I, I thought I'd today, since it's a digital nomad podcast, I'd dress up like I'm doing now here. I don't want to be formal, like wearing these kind of hats and tank tops. So I have some clothes, but it's just like shorts, clothes. I have a lot of things I haven't used over there. So I need my computer, I need my phone, I need my uh, my diary, stuff like camera that. But I, I don't need a lot. What? Camera? No, I use my Cam phone. Use your phone? No, not the yeah. camera. Or no, like, like today, it, it's not worth it. Just a, a quick heads up to content creators out there. You don't need a big camera. Like most phones will have better cameras than cameras below, let's say, $3,000. So you don't need a camera unless you really, uh, really do absolute video content. You don't need that. Um, so at the moment, you're in Bali, but... Uh, where would you like to keep your residency or where, where would you like to go maybe next or? So I'm going to go to Denmark and I really want to want to travel Asia for a bit. I have a one of my best friends in Denmark who's from the Philippines. I want to travel there with him. I want to see Thailand. I want to see Vietnam. I want to go to Singapore. But as a residency, it's going to be Bali. So when I've traveled for a bit, I'm going to go back to Bali and stay here for, let's say, a few years at least, and then see what happens. Maybe I'll stay for good. Not sure. I, I don't like, you know, you cannot Where make three years. Are you in Bali now? Yeah, I'm in Bali now. Ubud? In, in uh, Chengdu. Chengdu. Where? Where is it? I can't remember. It's, uh, like it's one hour and 15 minutes from the airport. It's like connected to Denpasar, which is the capital. On the, on, on, on. And it, it, it's amazing here. Like we have lockdown, but it's not that much in Chengdu. Chengdu is, is like a hotspot for digital nomads. I'm pretty sure it is the biggest uh, concentration of, of digital nomads in the entire world. So the network here is mind blowing, amazing, which is why I live here. Are you staying in the hostel at the moment? No, I live in a, in a guest house right now. In a guest house, yeah. Is there many other foreigners around you? Or are you the only one? We are a lot of foreigners. There is, I'd say, 20% uh, of those living here are from Indonesia. So we are from... Denmark and from Canada and from Australia and from Europe and from Mexico and yeah, like all over the place, right? Iceland. So there's quite a lot of foreigners at the moment in Bali. Quite a lot of foreigners. <laughs> but everything is closed. All the restaurants, all the bars are closed. Yeah. Right, right now, like there, there is even police guarding the beaches, but you can get to the beaches if you go in the morning. And you know, here you just order go, you order food with a with an app called Gojek, and you can get delivered food and drinks and like every everything you'll want, somebody can pick up for you. So we're having a pretty good time here at my at my guest house. <laughs> Thank you.
So how long would you like to spend in each country? You say you would like to visit Vietnam and maybe the Philippines. You plan maybe to stay a minimum of three months in each country or what, what would be your plan? I think that is too early to say now. Um, since I'm open to traveling for years, I think it's something I would figure out because some places I probably wouldn't want to stay for three months and some places I might might stay for a year. I'm not sure yet because when you're a digital nomad, um, there has to be a balance between having fun, living the Bali life and work. And it takes a few weeks to kind of settle in on a new place. So if you keep traveling, it's harder to, to do the work you'd want to do anyways, because as an entrepreneur, you don't have a nine to five, you're your own boss. So the more you work, the more you take responsibility for your business, the better you do. So traveling is one thing, but also have a business, also have clients, people have to serve. So I'm, I'm not sure about how long I would spend in each country. Some more than three months, some less, but it's early to say. Or in Japan, if you like it or not. And I really like traveling on one-way tickets. I'll, I'll just figure it out. <laughs> Uh, what is the thing that you love the most when you travel to a new country? The thing I love the most? Yeah, the thing that you like the most when you're visiting a new country? It is the, the experience at the adventure. And again, I like going on one-way tickets. I got to Bali. I traveled alone here. I knew a lot of people. Uh, connected with over Facebook throughout the year and found a lot of cool places I've, I would love to go to, but just, hey, do you want to go harpoon fishing today? Or do you want to go to that volcano this weekend? Or do you want to, like, just this adventure, not knowing what's going to happen in a week, meeting new awesome people you wouldn't have met in Denmark, having great experiences with them, just like taking it day by day, seeing things we don't have in Denmark, Experiencing things I didn't think was was an opportunity because I didn't know about you. You don't know what you don't know. And getting to a new country is there's so much to experience, so many adventures. Like in Denmark, I'd go to the woods here two weekends ago. It's like, guys, do you want to climb the volcano? Okay, Sunday morning, we go there. Two hour hike up, having the sunrise from a beautiful volcano. And going down again, just like casual Sunday from the morning till the evening, which is the afternoon, which is such an amazing experience. So you still find time to do other activities than work. Most of digital nomad work, what you say, seven, maybe 10 hours a day. And you still find the time to enjoy yourself as well and to visit the country around. But Saturday is my day off. And Sunday, if there's something special and I'm not too busy, I'll do it. Um, because you also have to think about, you, you cannot work all day, every day, because there's no finish line in life. There is, life doesn't end, or will it end at some point, you don't know when. But you can always scale, you can always grow, and you can keep doing that. There is always more to learn, and more to earn, and more people to meet. So if you never take a break, then you'll just burn out because you can keep learning, scanning and earning forever and ever and ever. So you need to take some time off Saturday. I don't even have my have my phone. I don't respond to messages. Just leave it. Enjoy the Bali life. What would be your advice for someone that would like to live as a digital member? What would you recommend to someone that wants to start this kind of life? But want to start this kind of life, um, be comfortable with failing because as an entrepreneur, you're going to fail and you're going to fail and you're going to fail again. But to me and to successful entrepreneurs, failing doesn't mean failure. If you have a fixed mindset, um, then, then you'll see failures as failures. You'll be like, ah, oh, I failed. Um, I have to stop and I have to quit because I cannot do this. But as an, as an entrepreneur, you'll be like, okay, I made a mistake there. I'm going to note it down. I'm take it, taking it to consideration and then I'll, I'll keep going. So fail forward, fail often and learn by your mistakes. 
because especially in the startup period, until you make your first sale or get your first client, then it takes some work. And then you get that first sale, that first client, and it's like a epiphany moment, like, wow, this actually works. I can actually do it. If I can do it once, then I can do it again. So take imperfect, immediate, and massive action and fail as often as possible because you are going to fail. So don't let that discourage you. That would probably be the most important advice because if you're not comfortable with failing, then you cannot be an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, well, this comes to the next question. So you just <laughs> explain to everyone what if you fail? So if you fail, you need to get back up and to try again, not to discourage. Right? Can, can you repeat that? The sound just... If you fail, you need to try again. Don't be discouraged. And try again. As an entrepreneur, as a digital nomad. So it is really a lot about doing identity work because like there is, and that, that is proven by science, there is both failure and success identities and if you're in quote-unquote a failure identity then no matter what you do you'll subconsciously attract failure to you so there's a lot of identity work i have no kidding butterflies in my stomach most of the day every day if i make a mistake i just laugh it off it's like okay i'm gonna learn from this so just be comfortable with with making mistakes and take it as as lessons, just see it as fun and be like, okay, I tried it. It didn't work. Let me try another approach. Oh, that, that didn't be work. strong it's in your mind. Very strong in your mind. Like, this kind of life, yeah. And I would, I would say, um, go and read Psycho Cybernetics, an amazing, amazing book about identity work and how to reprogram your identity and listen to Your Wish is Your Command by Kevin Trudeau. It's on uh, on Spotify. I've been through that five times a day, and it's absolutely amazing, really game-changing. I've actually... You can maybe send me the link later on, and I will add it in the description below for people if you're interested to download the book. I will put the link in the description below. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's carry on. Um, So we all know that you need quite a little bit of money to start this kind of life. How much money would you recommend to have in your pocket to start this kind of life? And, and that, is, that is the interesting part because when you dive into that podcast and when you learn that law of attraction works and it works like magic and before you've seen it, you'll be like, ah, law of attraction is a scam. When you figure that out, then it works. And actually, we have something called the training balance scale, which is either the how and the why, where the why is dreams, visions, attraction, goals, and the how is actions, strategies, planning. So there is why you do it and how you do it. And why you do it is 99.99% and the how is 0.1% meaning you don't really need to have a way to do it. You don't need to know how to do it. You just need to know that you do it. So I'd, I'd say in your money, when you start out, you're going to be a bit more insecure about yourself. So have so you can survive, survive on a, a minimum living standard in a cheap hostel, eating the cheapest food as possible for two months, because then you're not going to stress over not having money at all. So money to start your business and then money so you know you can survive for two months because if you don't have, then it's going to take some time to start and you'll get closer to run out, running out of money. And then in your mind, you'll stress over that and then you cannot focus on your business. Then you'll always have like, oh, how am I going to get by? And if I don't make a sale, then I'm, I'm screwed. And if you try to build a business and want to sell, then you have to come from a frame of, serving and helping people and not selling if they feel that you are sales and just want your money and they will feel that then you're not going to have a successful business and you're going to sell from the wrong frame 
So to be give people an idea, for example, how much do you spend uh, for a hostel a month and how much do you spend a month for food? <clears throat> so here I spend around around 500 USD for uh, <clears throat> for the guest house here, which is amazing. There's cleaning two times a week. There is a big swimming pool, hang around areas, big kitchen, bar, restaurant at the place. You have your own room. Well, you have your own room as well. Yeah, I have my own room. And scooter to get around is around, uh, including gas, maybe eighty dollar, and then food you can live as at first as little as five dollar US every day. Bali can be very expensive or very very cheap, so you really control it yourself. You can find hostels where you can stay there for literally five dollar a night. So let's say an average on eight hundred dollars a month to live in Bali. You you, you, can, you can definitely get by, and you, you don't oh, need yeah. a scooter. You can also do again go Jack like scooter taxis, which is they're basically free. It's so cheap, so you can get by for for eight hundred definitely. If you lower your your living standard, it you is speak in Indonesian. No. Not yet. Have you learned maybe a little bit few words or I've been trying a little bit, but uh, haven't been that serious about it yet since I'm just here for a short amount of time this time. And I've had a lot of <laughs> things to look by. Um, bit. So you said that you of course you're a digital nomad, you work online. Would you like to explain a little bit what you are doing and maybe if some people want to take your course to explain them? What is your course? Yeah, so I do I do time management and client acquisition coaching in my one-to-one, -one, meaning I help coaches and digital entrepreneurs like network marketing, affiliate marketing, stuff like that, grow their Facebook audience with potential clients instead of just friends, like make an actual business profile on their Facebook. And then I do time management and peak performance coaching combined with those. I just created a course coming out in August called Manage Your Time and Make More Money, which is in a, it's in a group setting, a 12-week course where there's two hours of live training and two hours of workshop every week. You get some one-to-one -one calls with me, stuff like that, around subjects like uh, time management, habit installing, confidence, secret laws of success, organic marketing, self-doubt, that kind of stuff. So I have my one-to-one -one where I help online business owners grow their business and get clients just by using their Facebook and Instagram without spending a dime on ads. And then I have a course where I help people with peak performance, doing more and less time without getting stressed and overwhelmed. And how much is the course? The course is priced at fourteen ninety seven, paid in full. Oh, fourteen ninety seven. Fourteen ninety seven. Fourteen ninety seven. All right. So I will put the link in the description below as well for people if they are interested in taking your, your course. Is there anything else you would like to to say for future digital nomad? Believe in yourself, it is possible. My passion is to help people realize that there's no such thing as impossible. I used to be a blacksmith. I didn't go to school more than to 10th grade. Then I got an education where I learned to work with metal. And then I lived at my parents' place for a long time and borrowed some money there to, to get my courses. So your past, doesn't matter at all how smart you are. It doesn't matter when you're a digital nomad because it is different skill sets you need to learn when you work online. So if you got bad grades in school, doesn't matter at all. Believe in yourself. Believe that you can do this. And it is not about how many resources you have, meaning the amount of money you have, the amount of skills you have, doesn't matter. The how doesn't matter. The why matters. You can learn everything. You have Google at your disposal. You can find all information online. You can find people to help you with what, what you're bad at. 
And you have to be resourceful, meaning I didn't have any of those 42,000 I've been, been spending on different courses and programs and help. But I knew if I want to grow as fast as possible, if I want to go to Bali, which is my dream, then I need this. So then I got resourceful. So believe that you can do this if it's your dream. Think about an interesting insight. When you, I heard that, that people know when they're going to die when you get older. When you get old, do you want to look back at your life and thinking, I missed so many opportunities. I knew I was going to do that. I saw my friend do it. Now they were successful and I've been living at a job I don't like for 60 years and I just regret I do want to lie with butterflies in your stomach and be like, wow, I lived the most amazing life I could have possibly imagined because I wasn't afraid. You have so many years, a mistake today, a fail today, it doesn't matter over the long run. So realize you can do this. Exactly. You can do this. It's not about what you have. It is about how resourceful you can get. And if it's your dream, then you freaking owe yourself to do it because you don't want to regret it. Don't stay in a job because you're afraid to quit. Don't stay in a job because you don't want to uh, be embarrassed because what if I fail? Uh, actually, one of the most important advices I would give is don't listen to other people's opinions unless they have the results you want. Don't take business advice from your parents or your best friends. It might be the people you listen to the most, but when it comes to online businesses, don't listen to anything they say because they want to protect you. They love you, so they want to protect you. They don't have the knowledge you have. They don't have the persistence and the certainty you have. So they will try to protect you by saying, what if you fail? Stay in your job. It is safe. If you just keep doing what you're doing, then you'll have a boss. And you know, there's going to come money in and stuff like that. I have so many people tell me that. And I was like, I don't care what you say. Like, And if you keep saying that, then I'm just not going to see you. I'll move home to my parents. Like, if you and I'm on Bali and they're all like, okay, you're wrong, Johan, proud of you. And now I live on Bali, like not to sound arrogant, but I live on Bali. They are ungrateful in their jobs. So don't listen to other people unless they have what you want. Not even your parents, not even your spouse, not even your best friend. <laughs> Thank you very much, Johan. It was very nice to meet you. So the video will be released uh, next uh, Wednesday. And yeah. uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you, buddy. Just going to switch off the record now.